you basically pay someone about 250 to 300 pounds. He turns up with a van and a computer, plugs into your car and removes as much mileage as you like. All you've got to do then is throw away the service history and sell it as a lower mileage car. Good afternoon. I have a part two for my police car video. I have a two part scandal for you. I have a giant waste of taxpayer money and I have a crisis in the second hand car market that is either the police turning a blind eye to the problem or the police encouraging the fraud. So stay with me for part two of my police car video because some new it has come to light, to quote the Big Lebowski, that's landed in my inbox after I posted that video. Little proviso, I filmed that police car video and whilst I was editing it, I thought, this is a load of rubbish. I'm waffling, I'm talking rubbish about the past and why they didn't buy the cars and whatnot. And I stopped editing it halfway through and I went to make made a cup of tea. I thought, no one's going to watch this, it's rubbish. And then I sort of second guessed myself and I thought, you know what, I will post it up on YouTube. Um, 70,000 views it's had now. So I thought, well, let's have a part two and I'll share some of this quite controversial information that has come to light. So before we get into that, a couple of things. I've got a note about the pricing of police BMWs from a gentleman who would rather remain anonymous. The only thing people tend to get wrong about police cars is the cost. While a five series costs us, Joe Public, a hefty sum, to the police or taxpayer, it probably costs less than half retail price because of government buying frameworks. Okay, great point. So what we're saying is the luxury BMWs that the police are swanking around in aren't luxury BMWs to them. They are just cars that are built en masse and bought at almost cost price direct from BMW. All right, they get a discount. Fair enough. So my question of why aren't we driving Jaguar Land Rover cars? The answer isn't necessarily because they're rubbish <laughs> uh, and only really built for the growth in the Chinese market. Um, the answer is that Jaguar Land Rover wouldn't be able to compete with the prices of BMW because BMW are a larger company and can therefore just undercut on the price. Simple as that. The second part of that is supply and demand. New cars are in such hot demand at the moment that there simply isn't the supply for them. So why would BMW bend over backwards to give cars to the government at cost price when they can sell them to you and me at full retail price uh, or maybe even a little more if prices are inflated? So great point. Thank you for that. That one came in via Instagram. Now, a little note on the, the actual problem that these cars are having. So this is from, uh, I'm just reading off my computer here. This is from Grimpen Meyer. This was a YouTube comment. Lots of you commented with what the problems actually are and how you deal with it. And I appreciate, and I did try to get back to as many comments as I could. So I've just picked out a couple here. I may do a follow-up where I read out some of your comments and give some thoughts and, and kind of bring everything together. So if you want to see a sort of reaction to the comments video, because there was more than a thousand comments, then, then let me know in the comments. Then I'll have to do a reaction to this video as well. And we just keep rolling it now. Fair to say that most police cars aren't updated performance-wise. That has also come to light because they are effectively under warranty. They're pretty standard. Only additions are bigger capacity batteries, alternators, different wiring limbs, and some trim changes to make hardware and materials or deletes where things aren't needed. Good comment. As regards the engines themselves, these diesels have a DPF, a diesel particulate filter, and that needs to be regenerated because it clogs up. So how does that work and why does it cause fires? A regen, a regeneration of the diesel particulate filter, works when a certain mileage or the pressure sensor within the filter reads that the DPF is blocked and it calls for a regen, regeneration. What it does is it puts an injection of fuel in on an exhaust cycle to go through the DPF. That heats the DPF to over 600 degrees Celsius and it burns the particulates out. This is fine if you're going up and down the motorway all day because the car is being used as it should. As a police car, they get thrashed within an inch of their life from startup. The DPF gets full faster and you get more regular regens. And when police cars sit around in town, this does the engines no good. As more fuel injected gets lost past the pistons and into the oil, this causes oil dilution and this breaks the cooling and clean protection quality of the oil. Then the bottom half of the engine gets damaged, it spins a shell and throws a rod. This causes an engine fire and other problems they suffer with. Okay, quite a complex comment, and I know that's not the only reason these cars are catching fire, but that hopefully gives you a little bit of background as to what's going on with these BMW police cars. Now, 
Allegedly, BMW told the police to use a slightly different service plan to what they normally would for the rest of their fleet, which, also allegedly, the police ignored. They followed their own standard service guide for these cars. Is that negligence? I'm not sure. Right. So there was an incident, PC Dumfries, obviously, as you well know, um, it was in the news recently. He was killed when his car caught fire on the M6, and that's super tragic, and it is currently being investigated at the moment to work out who's responsible for that. So, as a result of that happening, and the car fires, and obviously the, the, the tragic death of, of PC Dumfries, what is happening to the existing police cars? Now, in my last video... I didn't know some of this. The police have been told to stop using those BMWs and they've been dumping a lot of those BMWs into car auctions. Okay, fine, fair enough. Cars are no good for police use. Put them in an auction where they'll be okay for, you know, Joe Public. So I can go and buy a nice cheap BMW from an auction and uh, it will be fine for my use because I'm not doing stop start. I'm not doing 120 miles an hour every day to chase people and then I'm not leaving it idling at the side of the road for two hours whilst we put cones out. That's my normal use. Car will be okay for that. That would be fine. But what they're doing is they are holing the block. They're actually drilling a hole in the side of the engine block to ensure that that engine is not used again. There's a number of things that need to be discussed here. Firstly, that is horrendously wasteful because, as I've just said, those engines would be fine under normal use. And if I was to go to auction and buy a car that I knew had those problems... I would keep an eye on those problems. I would keep an eye on those things. I would look after the car to within an inch of its life and make sure that I wasn't going anywhere near the kind of parameters that caused that behavior. Because as we well know, this is a sort of problem that's mostly exclusive to the emergency services. So I believe there would be nothing wrong with those cars going through auction with a big sticker on the window saying, we know these cars have this problem, you buy at your own risk. But no, that's not good enough. They have to make a hole in the side of the engine and render it useless. Now, what does that do to the residual value of those vehicles? Because when we get into some of my examples, some of these cars are coming from the police to the auction. They're a year old and have only done a couple of thousand miles. And they're going through auction at less than half the we buy any car price that's stated for the mileage, okay? Let me give you an example. I have here a police car. It is, and I'm gonna put all these images up just here. So what I have here is a 2020, so a two year old BMW 330 diesel X-Drive Sport Auto Estate. Nice car, let's be honest, that's a nice car. Eight speed automatic, um, it is listed as 2,744 miles, okay? It's a non-runner, engine seized slash hold. This is the description from the auction house. Now, that car sold, um, I haven't got the date on here, but it's recent. I'm sorry, I'll put the date on. That car sold for £15,500, okay? The book price on that car, with that mileage, according to We Buy Any Car, who we know are going to buy cheaply and then it will be marked up somewhere so the retail price is higher the book price that we buy any car gave was 32,435 pounds so that's more than twice the hammer price that this car achieved okay let's go back to what we said earlier on what price are bmw selling their cars to to the police is it more or less than £15,500, because I'm willing to bet that the actual new price on a 330 diesel X-Drive Sport Auto is more than thirty grand. it has got to be. But I'll leave that one to the comments, you tell me. Now, this is where we start to get even murkier and we start to move into the scandal side of what's going on. If it's not bad enough that they are wasting good cars by putting holes in the engine blocks and losing a lot of money on vehicles that were effectively paid for by the taxpayer, what we have next is permissible vehicle clocking that the police know about 
that is happening in auction houses. This is effectively part two of my part two video. Because the police service their own vehicles, they don't always have an MOT record, which means a police vehicle can have three or four or maybe less, maybe more years of hard service within the police. And then it can go to an auction with no documentation except the digits on the odometer. Modern cars are much easier to clock than older cars. If I wanted to clock this car, I've got to take apart the dashboard. I've got to get into the little dials behind the back of the speedo and I've got to manually wind it back. I've then also got the fact that this car has an MOT history and on the MOT history, which is publicly available, you can see what the mileage was at each of its last MOTs. The police cars don't have that. They're also digital odometers and there's plenty of companies out there that do mileage adjustment services. I'm just going to pause this video because this is really funny. I was looking for an image to drop in and I thought what I need now is an example of a police car with a number plate. So I typed police car auction into Google and I scrolled down. I saw an Astra. I thought I'll use that. But then on the recommended images next to it, I saw another image of a police car, which was from a dealer. This one was VX65 ODU from a place selling police cars. I thought, oh, I'll use this as my example. So I popped that number plate into the DVLA's MOT history check, bearing in mind this is a car from 2015, so it would have been on the police force for three years. And sure enough, I scrolled down and the first mileage on the first MOT was 8,907, which is hilarious because all the other ex-police cars on this dealer's website are on around about 120,000 miles. So whilst trying to find an image to highlight my point that police cars are being clocked and sold, I accidentally found a police car that had been clocked and sold. It's pretty dodgy. It's been going on for some time. You basically pay someone about 250 to 300 pounds. He turns up with a van and a computer, plugs into your car and removes as much mileage as you like. All you've got to do then is throw away the service history and sell it as a lower mileage car. I have some examples for you. So, ignoring our We Buy Any Car £32,000 BMW, I have a 2017 Vauxhall Astra CDTI estate. Okay, so it's a 1.6 diesel, it's a manual, and it goes through the auction showing 136,588 miles. All right, that's on the 6th of December. On the 13th of December, so what's that? Six days, seven days later, so a week later, it goes for its first MOT because it's never been MOT'd because the police have had the car and they've never MOT'd it. So a week after going through the auction on 130,000 miles, it goes for an MOT with only 56,000 miles on the clock. Presumably after that, it then appeared on a dealer forecourt with 56,000 miles on the clock. And some poor person would have turned up and bought that from a dealer, not knowing that it was an ex-police car, not knowing that it actually had 80,000 miles more on not just the odometer, on all the suspension components, the drivetrain, all the key bits had 80,000 miles more on the clock than they realised when they bought the car. So it had a hammer price at the time of £3,000 and I can only presume it would have been sold for seven, eight, ten in the current market. And all the dealer had to do was phone his mate to come down in a van with his computer to change the mileage and then take it for an MOT. I have another one. It gets slightly better. Here we have a Hyundai i30 N Performance. So this must have been some sort of unmarked police car, maybe a fleet car, maybe a pool car, something like that. Um, it goes through the auction on the 29th of November last year, showing 167,000 miles. It then, I presume, sits around for a month and on the 4th of January this year goes for its first MOT showing 57,523 miles. So we sold at the auction in November, we MOT'd in January and we lost 109,000 miles. This is very, very interesting stuff and it is effectively skewing what is going on in the used car market. Now, the person that brought this to my attention, who would prefer to remain unnamed, and that's great, had this to say. As for why, it's an open secret within the motor trade that if you want to go and clock a car, buy a high mileage police car. It sounds crazy and ironic 
and amazing when you consider the police know and don't care. I've always thought it would be a good story and I've passed it on to journalists over the years, but nobody has been interested enough to do any research. From what I understand, the contract with the auction house offers a number of things to the police. Collection, decommissioning, de-stickering, and one of the options is to have the car MOT'd by the garage down the road from the auction house. Some forces take them up on that, but many don't. So the clocking problem is really down to the police force rather than the auction. Absolutely. If you're an auction house, you can only take what you're given. Surely the onus is on the police. But really, this is a case of turning a blind eye. The question is, do they know about this and do they know the harm it's causing? Obviously, the irony being that it's illegal to clock a car. Kent slash Essex police are the biggest offenders of this. Now, this person that contacted me was trying unsuccessfully to convince the police forces to present the cars for an MOT before sending them to the auction. And he got in touch with Tony Petz, who's the fleet manager at Kent Police, who said, we will continue to apply our statutory exemption from MOTs to minimise public costs. I cannot speak for other forces, but MOTing presents a cost without any material increase in the residual value. Now, I think what we need to do here is analyse those words. We will continue to apply our statutory exemption from MOTs. We're allowed to not have MOTs, and because we're allowed to do that, we won't have MOTs, and that will minimise the costs to the public. Okay, maybe it costs them £40 and a little bit of time to get a car MOT. I can't speak for other forces, but MOTing presents a cost without any material increase in the residual value. I think what's being said there is this. I cannot speak for other forces, but MOTing presents a cost with a significant decrease in the residual value. Which basically means, I'm sorry, sir, but the reason we don't MOT the cars is because we know we can get more money for them if they go through the auction with no physical, tangible record of the actual mileage attached to the car. There's your scandal. There's your cover up. There's your turning a blind eye. Who's at fault? Um, good question. We have a police force turning a blind eye to the fact that their cars are going into auction, but maybe that's not their prerogative to do that. We absolutely have some dealers who are um, old school, to be fair. Clocking cars is properly old school. We associate clocking cars with, like, Matilda's dad, you know, Roald Dahl, Matilda, filling the petrol tanks up with sand and clocking the cars and painting the filler and all this stuff that happened in the 70s. Two-directional drill. You run it backwards, the numbers go down. Watch your speedometer. Cool. But actually, car clocking is a bigger deal now than it ever, ever has been. We think that cars are getting safer. We think that buying modern cars is getting is allowing us to have more reliable vehicles. We think that the experience of buying a car is better than ever. And if anything, if I can say this while sitting in my dependable 1996 Volvo, my daily driver, my beloved Volvo, I don't think cars are any more reliable than they ever were. I don't think buying a car is any easier or safer than it ever was. And if anything, with modern cars, it seems to me that it's easier to hide crash damage on a car listing with a new car. It's easier to hide the mileage and the engines are less reliable. So like many things that are going on in the world in 2022, we seem to have taken a giant step backwards. So thank you very much to everybody who saw my original police car video on why the police are no longer using BMWs. Let me know what you think of this new information that's come to light. Let me know what you think about the fact that cars are being clocked and the police don't seem to care. Have you ever bought a clocked car? Have you ever clocked a car? Maybe post that one anonymously um, and tell me what you think about this, what I would call a revelation. I hope I covered everything. Um, as I said, I may end up doing three or four videos on this because you guys seem to love it and your comments are just brilliant. So keep them coming and thank you very much for watching. Oh, my kids always say to me, Daddy, why don't you ever ask people to like and subscribe? And they said this to me last night and I said, well, the honest answer is, 
I don't like watching YouTube videos where they tell me that I have to like and subscribe. So for the first time ever, I'm going to say on a YouTube video, please give me a like and please click the subscribe button and do that thing where you switch on the notifications as well. Because apparently, according to my children, six and ten, it helps. Seriously, though, thanks for watching. Someone else should be doing this stuff. It shouldn't be down to me. I just like making videos about old cars. Why am I having to expose all of this stuff? Again, let me know in the comments.